Hello, everybody. My name is Leslie minix -Wolf. I'm Director of Product Marketing at ScienceLogic, and joining me today is Seamus McGillicuddy. He's the Research Director at Enterprise Management Associates, focused on networking. Seamus, thanks for joining today. Thanks for having me, Leslie. It's nice to be here. All right, great. Well, we recently worked together on a paper, and I'm interested in having you share with the folks that are listening in, based on your research, based on your interactions with customers, which I'm sure you do on a daily basis, if you could give us a quick insight into what's the state of IT today from your perspective? Network and IT professionals are doing a lot of firefighting. And in fact, the average network operations team spends more than 70% of its day fixing problem. That means 29% of the day is spent delivering new value to the business in terms of IT transformation, digital transformation, and things like that. They just don't have enough time to do anything other than keeping things up and running. Our research shows that as enterprises try to improve overall experience for end users, they struggle with things like root cause analysis. They struggle with being able to communicate the impact of IT services on lines of business. They struggle to understand who uses these services, and they struggle to understand how performance impact of third-party services like the public cloud are impacting overall IT services. So they're dealing with more complexity and a lot more pressure to communicate with the business. You know, that's consistent with what we're seeing with our customers and, you know, prospects that we're working with. How and why do you see that IT organizations are struggling today? They're dealing with a lot of legacy infrastructure and the legacy tools on top of that infrastructure. So if you think about how a lot of mainframe specific monitoring tools are monitoring those mainframes, how do you integrate that into an overall IT operations platform? How do you manage those mainframe workloads in context with the overall IT services. Like that that might be some back end infrastructure is critical to some of your more modern infrastructure from an overall IT service perspective. And so and that gets to the notion of siloed tools, which is another big issue. You got siloed tools with their own data sets and very specific processes for using those tools. There's no common data model for viewing and analyzing the problem across all the infrastructure from network to compute and storage up to the application layer out into the cloud. And incidentally, speaking of silos, about one third of network teams today use 11 or more tools just to monitor and troubleshoot their part of the infrastructure. You take that out to like the rest of the IT organization, everyone has so many point tools even within their silos, it's hard to even understand what's happening within their own domain because it's so fragmented. And then there's also a lack of context across infrastructure and applications and services. There are many tools that focus on fault and performance management of the infrastructure and no contextual information about how the infrastructure is affecting the overall performance of applications and extrapolated out to user experience. Right. We've seen, again, similar uh, scenarios with customers that we've been working with as well. I mean, we just recently worked with GDIT, General Dynamics, and they were integrating over 23 different tools or data sources together into their platform and trying to build more of a, of a service-centric approach. So what kinds of transformations do you see that uh, are required for organizations as they're dealing with this legacy, they're dealing with the silos? What are the key requirements that you think that they should be looking at? Well, you want to start with something along the lines of comprehensive and intelligent data collection. Hopefully you have monitoring systems that can collect data across different parts of your infrastructure, uh, both public cloud, for instance, and private cloud and, and legacy data center infrastructure, and being able to co collect that data up and down the stack in your data center. Uh, the more hardware and software layers you can collect data on in one environment, the better. You also want to have contextual understanding, so how infrastructure impacts applications and services, for instance, uh, help and in, in, in connecting that to user experience. So, you know, maybe having something like a service-centric view of infrastructure infrastructure monitoring, you know, when a certain part of the infrastructure is having trouble, how does that impact not only the devices around it that are connected to it and depend on it, but also how the larger application topology and, and architecture is affected by one piece of infrastructure having problems. There's also a drive for 
using more automation, being able to automate something from whether it be just like discovery of infrastructure and discovery of applications and services on that infrastructure to automated configuration of service profiles for monitoring them, you know, being able to say, we recognize this as a critical business application, it's going to, we're going to monitor it in this way. And then also maybe having some analytics on top of that platform that can help you automate some other aspects of operations like root cause analysis. And then just being ready to support digital initiatives, technologies that your enterprise might be expanding its use of or introducing to the environment for the first time. For instance, public cloud. Our research shows that the average enterprise sees about 44% of all network traffic being attributable to public cloud applications. So uh, clearly there's a, a heavy amount of cloud-related traffic hitting your network, uh, interacting with your users, probably interacting with your legacy infrastructure and private clouds. Uh, containers, 68% of enterprises are evaluating containers right now. Serverless infrastructure and services also very popular. 87% of network teams tell us that they're supporting some form of uh, Internet of Things initiative. Uh, a lot of them are extending their existing tools to monitor that. And then we also find that software-defined data centers are driving more than a third of cloud initiatives right now. So being able to sort of abstract infrastructure, be able to monitor more of a software-centric view of the world in your data centers. So those are, those are probably the big three. Yeah, no, that, that's, uh, again, very consistent. And it's interesting with all the latest technologies like serverless, containers, et cetera, there's a need for automation, but also automated contextualization of the infrastructure components of the application and the, and the services. They sort of uh, are intertwined, even though we call them out as separate components being automation and context, people want more automated context so that they can then take more automated action. So sort of wrapping up here, what are some recommendations that you have for organizations who are trying to transform themselves to become more service-centric? Well, people need to have the same picture of the world if they're going to work together on solving these issues. So the first thing I would say is establish a data lake or a common data model for understanding infrastructure and services across the entire IT operation so that you're not stuck within the network team using one set of data, the hypervisor team using another set of data, maybe the cloud people using a third set of data. And, and even security, security people using their own set of data. There's no common language when there's no common data model. So that might involve consolidation of some tools or integration of a lot of key tools, like integrate with an IT service management platform to just sort of get a common uh, context of how things are, are running you know, up and down the stack. Look for tools that can provide service-centric context for infrastructure. So you're not just looking at a list of up-down statuses on all these devices that are completely unrelated to each other. You know, they need to be grouped into some sort of event management workflow where you can search and you know, see all this up-down stuff, you know, like, oh, there's a lot of red here, but what does it all mean? Is it all related or not? You know, some sort of intelligent context can help you group alerts together so that you have more efficiency in your workflows when you're doing triage. And then automate. Just be more sophisticated about the notion of automation. A lot of people, especially in the networking world, they think of automation as like a one-off script that they've written in Python or something where they just run it to like make a change in the network or a, you know restart a switch or something based on something they've seen in their monitoring tools. It's about more than that. It's about automating things more systematically from discovery of infrastructure to configuring and monitoring profiles to some people People are automating not just troubleshooting uh, root cause analysis, but also fixes. Being able to say, okay, my tool has discovered that these servers uh, have a high CPU utilization, probably affecting the performance of this business service. Let's spin up some more VMs to run this part of the application architecture to really um, protect performance. And that can be done automatically by an IT operations tool that has some workflows or some integrations with other aspects of the operation of your engineering and operations tools. And you can start small with automation. So I think you need to pull this data together. You need to clean the data. You need to get it into a state that it can be used to drive automation. And having context around that data allows you to do automation in ways that maybe we haven't been able to do in the past, where we can actually not just run a script that fixes one little thing, but actually understanding the context of how that infrastructure supports a service. Now we can automate the repair to that service, or we could automate 
a change management process or a configuration management process around that service. It all kind of works together in terms of the collection of the data, adding the context, and then driving automation. So yeah. thank you very much, Seamus, for joining me today. I appreciate your insights and experience and hope folks uh, got as much out of this as we have. Maybe they'll even take a moment or two to read through the white paper that you've written and find out more details about the challenges that IT is facing as they move to be more service-centric. Thanks again for your time. Thank take care. You.